The window of tolerance is a model which helps to understand the variable nature of an individual's capacity and ability to cope and function. We all have zones or ranges of optimal coping and functioning, as shown by the green band in the diagram. This is known as our window of tolerance. When an individual is within their optimal zone or window of tolerance, they are able to experience and tolerate thoughts and emotions, and they are able to cope with the ups and downs, opportunities and challenges of everyday life without much difficulty. They will be more able and likely to take in and process information, think logically and make informed decisions and respond and behave in developmentally appropriate ways. Windows of tolerance, that is, the degree to which we can cope, will vary from person to person and will vary for each individual depending on what we are doing and what is happening around us. Those who have a narrow window of tolerance may feel as though their emotions are highly changeable or intense, which can be overwhelming and hard to cope with. Others with a wider window of tolerance may feel as though they experience less noticeable ups and downs, or that emotions are not frequently intense and overwhelming. It is important to remember all of us experience emotions and, for each of us, what we can cope with, or how much we can cope with, will vary. Factors that impact the size of our window of tolerance include the number of demands and stressors we have, life events, including change and transition, and adverse life experiences, relationships and interactions with other people, our stage of development and our physical health, individual factors such as physical health, diet, activity levels and sleep. Repeated or multiple negative experiences such as multiple stressors, traumatic or upsetting life events, challenging or unsupportive relationships with others may narrow our window of tolerance, therefore impacting on our longer-term ability to cope with similar situations or emotional responses. Conversely, repeated or multiple positive experiences, such as minimal stressors, experiences of mastery and pleasure, supportive and nurturing relationships, may widen our window of tolerance, therefore enabling and building resilience, tolerance and coping. Regardless of the size of an individual's window of tolerance, there are times when everyone is faced with situations that result in thoughts and feelings which are overwhelming and intolerable, which we feel unable to cope with. At these times, we are no longer within our window of tolerance. Our resilience, coping and functioning become compromised. When this happens, an individual will experience an episode of hyperarousal or hypoarousal. Hyperarousal is typically characterised by intense emotion, high levels of anxiety or panic, intrusive or racing thoughts, strong and powerful feelings which can be unpleasant and scary to experience. This can be an overwhelming and scary experience which can result in impulsive, dysregulated or reactive behaviour. Behaviour might include distress, verbal or physical hostility, or aggression towards others or oneself, running away, or engaging in behaviour that might be considered risky or unsafe. You might have heard the term fight or flight response. This is a good description of being hyper-aroused. Hypo-arousal often occurs when the situation or emotions being experienced are so overwhelming or intolerable that an individual experiences an involuntary total shutdown. This is often characterised by withdrawal, disconnection, dissociation, feelings of numbness or emptiness. For some people who are hypo-aroused, they are unable to respond, communicate 
or engage in tasks and activities. Others may go into autopilot mode, so from the outside it may appear as though they are functioning and OK, but emotionally and psychologically they are checked out. You might have heard the term freeze response. This is a good description of being hypoaroused. In either of these hyper or hypoaroused states, an individual may become unable to process information. Parts of the brain that deal with problem solving, decision making and emotional coping shut down. This is why it is so hard to cope. A person may appear in crisis or may behave out of character when they are out of their window of tolerance. Everyone is capable of experiencing both states of hyper and hypoarousal, although usually people will experience one state more than the other. It can be hard for some people to know what the triggers are for becoming overwhelmed and out of their window of tolerance, or knowing the differences between the triggers that will result in a hyper or hypoarousal state. The other important consideration when thinking about individuals, their window of tolerance and what happens when they are out of their window of tolerance and not coping, is how long it can take and the factors that can help someone manage their level of arousal in order to come back into their window of tolerance and zone of optimal coping and functioning. Again, this is unique to each individual in respect to how long it can take and what the helpful factors are.